Good afternoon, everyone. Unexpected solar event 7,000 years ago tied in with the 775 and 994 AD. Disruptions globally of climate taking down the Mayan kingdom during the same time the Tang dynasty fell. Area here on the map, as well as Japan, would be affected in that same regional area. And when we look at Chinese and Japanese history, it is just fractured during that time for some reason. Fast forward to today, right side in Totori is the exact same areas where all these new record snows, cold events are coming, as well as Tokyo, Kyoto, and all these different places. But interesting, that red on the left side of the map, that's the same area that fell apart during the classical Japanese period. Eastern Roman Empire also affected all these areas here with the record snows we've seen across this area specifically this year. And as we look, every time the sun does affect different dynasties and kingdoms, they peg it down to magnetic activity on the sun being a driver for the change. TSI dropping. Solar polar fields not looking normal. And the forecast for the grand solar minimum starting right now. And while you're watching the video, please remember to subscribe to Adapt2030 and also join me on Stitcher and iTunes for my mini Ice Age Conversations podcast. New article out talking about using carbon-14 isotopes. What they found was unexpected spikes in cosmic ray increases. 5480 BC as well as 775 and 994 AD. Now let's connect this with using stalagmites to get a reconstruction for rainfall and how the rise and fall of Chinese dynasties are affected to food production during this time. And right around... 900 AD, the Tang Dynasty is collapsing and the Mayan Kingdom is completely wiped out due to drought. So we're taking a look at the Tang Dynasty. The old capital was Chang'an. You can see how far west it extended past Kashgar, which is the current border out in Xinjiang in China, further out into Central Asia. When we take a wider view out through Asia itself, you start to see Japan and Korea in this shot here, but notice the dates on this. Sui Dynasty took over from its predecessor around 590 or so. When we get into the records here, we start to see the Wei Dynasty collapse from a grand solar minimum around 585. They pick up the pieces and they run through, and then around 620 or so, another drop off in temperatures affected precipitation, and then the Tang Dynasty took over from that point up to about 945. But when we look at the timeline of Chinese dynasties, it is totally fractured from, say, 400 through the late antique Little Ice Age, through these events around 700, and then up into the 900 AD collapse of the Tang Dynasty. But when you notice on the bottom, from that point forward, it's pretty smooth, except for the grand solar minimums, which wipe out each dynasty. Not nearly as fractured. And we start to see the same fracturing in Japanese history, too, the classical period. But just how many dynasties and states had changed in that very short amount of time is indicative of some serious food shortages. And it came into little fiefdoms that were able to grow food and protect it. Basically what it boiled down to in the Nara period in what's termed classical Japan. Highlighted in blue, Japan suffered from a series of natural disasters, including wildfires and droughts and famines, outbreaks of disease. Increased cosmic rays coming in at the same time. And when we take the wide out on the map here, Chang'an, and we take a look over in Japan as well. So it's a regional effect, obviously. And how far west past the influence of the Tang Dynasty does this go out into the Byzantine, into what was the Persian areas getting way over into the Baltic Sea and Turkey? Now the Song Dynasty expanded, the Northern Song and the Southern Song, and they had abundant harvests. So when we look at this, they took over and their timeline was really smooth for those 200 years approximately. But when we overlap the time scales of collapses of Chinese dynasties on our reconstruction temperature line here, that Southern Song collapsed around 1270. The smaller Jin Dynasty and the Japanese Heian period ended during that 1200. You can see that lighter red bar there. So every time there's a drop off in solar activity or there's some change in the magnetic field of the sun, we here on Earth are affected. And at their times, they were the most highly advanced scientifically, mathematically, trade-wise, agricultural-wise, and they still were wiped out time and time again. Interestingly, the Nara and Heian period in classical Japan 
far left in the red. Let's jump over to the far right where you can see the airplanes on the modern map. Totori, this whole area is getting record snow and record cold again. Tokyo had the earliest snowfall ever recorded. Totori breaking two all-time snow records this year. And Kyoto and all across those same areas. That was the Nara and Heian area. You're starting to see overlaps in history, literally thousands of years apart, but the signals are the same. So talking about going further west over toward Turkey and what was the Byzantine Empire and Persia, was climate change behind the fall of these empires as well around 700 AD? This is the area on the map. And if we bring it into actually 2016 and 17, all-time record snows across the beaches of Greece. All-time record snows on Crete. Snows down to the beaches. All-time record snow records broken across specifically western Turkey. And the Bosphorus Strait. Black Sea ice. Sirius snows. All the way down in through the meter of snow in the Sahara Desert this year in 2017. Again. 1,500 years of time separates this map from our modern map, yet the weather anomalies are repeating in the same areas. And I like at the end of the article from Scientific American, it does potentially add another human civilization to the list of those beset by climate change. I will have to agree with that. And when we just look at... At the reconstruction of different temperatures and time frames across thousands of years, not just since the satellite era began or since the 1850s, we see how temperature rises and falls, and it's all based on the sun. Some areas have more effect on the planet. Other areas are a little more impervious. Russian Altai Mountains definitely going to be affected in this grand solar minimum. At the bottom is the planetary geometry of how the Jovians were lined up to the onset of each of these dips in temperature. Far right is what we're going into over the next six years. The article also goes on to talk about a change in magnetic activity as a driver of these changes. So let's take a look. Is there any change happening in our sun? Total solar irradiance. One of the three steepest drop-offs since the 1600s on record. One of those was the entrance into the Maunder Minimum. The other was the entrance into the Dalton Minimum. So you know we're going into another minimum just based on this. I'll leave this chart up here for you to look at, discern yourself. Do you think it's dropping, increasing, staying level? And remember, it only takes three watts per square meter to usher in drastic changes and snowfall variations on this planet. Solar polar fields. I'll let you look at this and see if it looks a little strange in these last few years or if it continues with the normal pattern. Another look at solar polar fields for you in just a different array. Again, I'll ask you to look at it and see if you see any changes with your own eyes. And when we do come out, there's a lot of people forecasting a grand solar minimum starting right now. Here's what it looks like on a sine wave pattern. We're going to take a step down through solar cycle 25, but then it looks like we're going to decrease even further in solar cycle 26, which is easily going to usher in a modern minimum type event, if not cooler, like a late antique little ice age event. So regardless of the severity of what's happening right now in this next solar cycle or in the solar cycle after this one, solar cycle 26, we need to be getting ready for this. Kingdoms, dynasties, fiefdoms, rulers, kings, queens have all been wiped out every time one of these events comes. It's here again. We're not any different. We're probably more vulnerable with all of our just-in-time delivery, our modern electronic devices, and most people don't even know how to grow food or be self-sufficient. So I would say... Beyond the delivery systems that we might have in place, that revolve on credit, no less, which might dry up. Otherwise, there's like 95 negatives against the modern society compared to the one positive we do have with mechanized machinery and delivery of products to market. Now, looking forward in the next grand solar minimum, pushing below 25 sunspots, well, that just takes us right back into the modern minimum here. You can take a look at how many average sunspots there were during those lean years. So perhaps we do stay at 25 to 40 in solar cycle 25. That's just going to be a step and a drop off into a modern minimum type event coming up in the 2030s. So regardless, if your children 
are going to have to live through this. You really might want to start thinking about preparing for their lives as well, preparing them the skills they need so they can survive as well as yourself. If you're a younger parent right now, you're definitely going to live through this. If you are under 40 years old, you are going to live through this and your children are going to live through this gargantuan change to these next two steps down. So anybody that's listening, trying to say, well, you're just being scaremongering. Look at the historical record. And as always, I encourage you to do your own research. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. With these changes coming, crop losses are here already. It's being buried in the media. All the vegetable losses across Europe this year, and they're just trying to make it as well. They only lost one head of lettuce. Yeah, they're trying to downplay this so much. The effects are upon us. We're starting to see them right now. Your food price is going to continue to rise from this point forward. Through 2017 into 2019, you're going to really notice how much food prices are jumping. And it's not going to be just because inflation that they're going to try to blame everything on. It's because of the losses that are occurring right now with our foodstuffs. When these losses outpace the gains, even if you have cash, you might not even have availability of supply. I encourage you to jump over and talk to Bob Kula at Trade Genius. He can explain this in a much better fashion about forward contracts and taking delivery and where they see price rises going up based on ancient cycles and which parts of the planet produce which grains that are going to be affected most greatly.